I'm Ruth Grijalva with Forever in Stitches, and I'm going to show you in this video how to take a particular programmed object out of an edge-to-edge -edge program and make it into its own border. To start, I'm going to go get a pattern. In this case, I'll drag it in, make it bigger, but just to show you, I'm going to go to Save Pattern. This pattern is from Forever in Stitches. It's one of my husband's patterns called Kids Baby All Over. What we're going to do with this pattern is we are going to cut the buggy out of this edge-to-edge -edge pattern and make it into its own border. To do that, I'm going to scroll in on the buggy so that I can see the lines nicely and I'm going to use the split function. Split has three different types of splits, but in our case, we're going to simply do a divide. We want to cut it right there so that we can take the object out. Now, we're lucky in that we can obviously see the line coming into our buggy and the line going out of our buggy, but sometimes it's not always that easy to tell which line you're on. So one of the things you could do is click, okay, we're not sure what line we're on, start using the nudge points. In this case, I'll nudge, see, we know we're on the right line, except going in the wrong direction. So now we'll just go over to where we're close to the wheel, but no, that's too much. We'll go back out and we'll say accept. Now we want to tell it what object we want to do again. So we're going to highlight, notice that turned to darker green, highlight the buggy and click again. Use the nudge to, whoop, wrong direction. Use the nudge to get us to where we want to be. That's too close. So I'm going to come out and say accept. If I now use the transform function and highlight the buggy, it is its own pattern ready to be worked on. I could just save it as is, but we're going to work on it and turn it into a border. I'm going to clean up here. We're going to highlight the edge to edge, right click on it and delete it. Highlight this portion, right click and delete it. You definitely want to do that so that you don't somehow save it and overwrite the original edge to edge pattern. Now that we have the buggy, we are going to scroll in and take a better look at it. Right off the bat, I see one problem in that most borders that you receive all replicate from left to right. To do that, that means that their starting point, the green node, needs to be on the left. For us to change this buggy, have it highlighted, and up here under Reverse Sew, the brown button with two directional arrows, click it and it automatically switches or reverses the sewing positions. Next thing I'm going to do is align the bottom wheels of my buggy on one of my grid lines. I'm going to right click on it and say Copy. This will allow me to take a copy of the buggy and also put it on that same, I'm aligning the wheels on the grid line. Well, when my buggies replicate, how close do I want them together? We don't want the handles to touch or anything like that, so let's place it about right there. Now we'll come back to the original buggy. At this point, we're going to use the Draw Text button. I'm going to click on draw text and then click on our first buggy. It immediately turns the buggy blue and shows you all of the nodes that make up the pattern. In this case, it's very easy to see because we left a piece of it sticking out that this was our original start mode and this is our original ending node. Well, we're going to use that ending node and we're simply going to stretch it clear over and place the two squares directly on top of each other. Now we could leave this line between the two patterns straight, but I think it looks better if we arc it. So if we point to it, right click and say arc, 
we're able to get this blue circular node that allows us, if we push up or push down on it, to change the look of the line. And I think that looks about right like that. I'm going to scroll back out and go back into transform mode. We now have the connection set for the buggy. So let's right click on our copy and delete it. At this point, the buggy is really set to be used as a pattern. However, we have to do one final thing, and that is to make sure that the start and the stop nodes are exactly on the same horizontal grid line. To ensure that, I'm going to go back to transform and I'm going to scroll all the way in until I get my 1 4th inch grid lines. I'm then going to click on my buggy and I'm going to move it just slightly under a grid line connection. I'm going to scroll out a little bit and I'm going to now go up to settings and turn snap to grid on. With snap to grid on, I'm going to now go back to my ABC draw function and I'm going to scroll back in on my start node. What I want to do is slightly grab, uh, notice I barely grabbed it and it immediately jumped to the grid line. I'm going to scroll back out and come over here and look at my stop node. Again, I'm going to grab it, whoop, barely grabbed it, and it jumped back to the grid line. So now both the start and the stop are snapped to a grid line and will be on the exact horizontal line. We're going to go back up and turn snap to grid off. I'm going to go back to the um, transform mode, highlight the pattern, and it's ready to save. So I'm going to go to Save Pattern, and I'm going to call it Fizz Baby Buggy Border. Whoop, helps if you spell right. Bor Jeez, helps if you spell right. Border. Save. I've been practicing, so I'm going to go ahead and overwrite the one that I did. I'm going to scroll out a little bit, and now let's see if it works. We're going to add it more, 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 clicking our more or less buttons. Now, if on your particular screen, if you don't have the more or less buttons, you have an older version of the software. You need to actually go to the edge to edge screen and use the more or less repeats, more or less buttons. Works just the same, it's just the newer versions have it as separate buttons. And that completes your border. It's now ready to use on any cute baby quilt. I hope that was helpful to you. Hopefully you found something you can use from this video. You can find much more information on using the design functions of the Autopilot's Mach 3 software in our self-study training book with matching videos entitled Be Creative with Your Mach 3. This course is available on our website's online store at foreverinstitches.com. Thank you.